We are live. Perfect. I feel like I feel like the music was a little bit better this time for our thirty minutes. I was kind of rocking out before the, <laughs> the over to this. So, so I was thinking it's like officially spooky season, and we need like an intro, kind of like a tales from the crypt type thing. Like we could have like worn costumes and stuff like that. So totally missed oh, opportunity there. We really did. <laughs> we'll get it. Yeah. Well, uh, welcome, friends, again. For, thanks for joining us for another uh, machine learning community stand up. Uh, today we have Franz joining us, who's going to be talking to us about uh, his tool extension that he's built uh, inside of uh, Visual Studio Code that allows you to use ML.NET and provides a really nice UI on top of, um, you know, the ML.NET CLI. So he's going to be talking a little bit more about that. Um, but first, let's start with introductions. Uh, I'll I'll start off. Uh, I'm Luis. I'm a content developer, and I work on Microsoft Docs. And I guess I'll go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's just go around. <laughs> so I'm Bree. I am a PM on the .NET team, specifically uh, ML.NET, and I'm also Malibu's uh, dog mom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Jake. I'm the engineering manager on the ML tooling team for .NET stuff. Um, yeah. Awesome. And this is Franz. <laughs> yeah, and I'm Franz. No, so, uh, my name is Franz Silva. Um, I work full-time CTO at uh, a company called Television Technologies. But on my spare time, I like to contribute to open source. Awesome. Yeah, well, we're really looking forward to hearing more about uh, the projects that you've been working on. Um, and speaking of community contributions, open source, let's go to community links. That's so, not what I at all. <laughs> there we go. Awesome. Yeah, so uh, we got tons of stuff uh, this week, and uh, we know we, we love to see uh, the community contributing, writing. Uh, Bruno has been pretty busy the past two weeks. Uh, there's a few uh, posts that he's created, mainly around object detection and sort of labor classification um, scenarios. Um, so this one here uh, is just kind of like an introduction of how you can do ML.NET, uh, sorry, how you can do object detection. Uh, with uh, with Model Builder, right? This was something that was uh, fairly recently announced and and released uh, inside of Model Builder. So you can go ahead and um, you know basically use uh, Model Builder to build an object detection model that you can then you know deploy to your .NET applications. Um, while he was uh, sort of going through the exercise, I assume he ran into a few issues. And uh, Bruno, if you're on, um, I, I I didn't really see if you had uh, raised an issue. But if uh, there was some problem here, right, uh, that you ran into, we definitely appreciate if you uh, raised an issue in the in the repo, right, the machine learning model builder repository. Um, and then there's this other one, which is image classification. But at this time, instead of doing it in model builder and having a GUI, uh, you're essentially doing it inside of uh, the command line, right? And this is really nice for those scenarios where perhaps uh, you might want to go cross-platform, right? So Model Builder is, is currently just um, uh, limited to, to Visual Studio, which means uh, Windows only, but the ML, with the ML.NET uh, CLI, uh, you're able to take advantage of uh, all these scenarios. Um, all, all those scenarios uh, in sort of the, the, the command line. Um, I think we're, I'm seeing some comments in the chat that there's a feedback loop. Not sure what's going on. Is is everybody anybody else hearing that? All right. Uh, let us know in the chat if your audio if the audio sounds a bit messed up. Um, okay. So the audio. Somebody says that the audio is good. Okay. So let's keep going. Uh, maybe Kung, Kung Fury keyboard. Maybe uh, you might want to try logging off and logging back into the stream. Um, okay. So we have John here. Uh, who put out an update for his uh, deep learning neural network uh, video, right? So make sure to check that out. Um, kind of going along the lines of, in this case, he uses the the API, right, to build this. Uh, so you can take a look at that. Uh, we also have a few videos that uh, Biswa Ranjan, and I apologize if I may have mispronounced your name, um, but uh, he's been putting out a lot of videos around Blazor and how you can use Blazor with ML.NET. So uh, make sure to give those a look on, on YouTube. Um, moving on to product news and, and things surrounding the product. So if you would like to help shape the future, let me make this a little bit bigger. It might be hard to see. Um, if you would like to help shape the future of MLOps or machine learning operations, which is kind of like DevOps, the closest thing you can think of it is like DevOps for machine learning, 
Um, and what that looks like within the .NET ecosystem, uh, please go ahead and provide your feedback. Uh, just take a, a couple minutes, and uh, we'd love to hear from you, uh, what, are you do, what you're doing uh, in terms of DevOps practices. Even if you're not doing MLOps or, the, or using sort of MLOps in, in your current workflows, uh, it's interesting to hear what sort of DevOps tools you, uh, you folks are using. Uh, that way, you know, we can make that sort of experience uh, a little bit more seamless and, and better. So make sure to, to let us know. Um, we also have this, this is something that we talked about a few weeks ago uh, on one of the community standups, which is that uh, there was some work happening to basically upgrade uh, testflow.net. It was the previous version or originally ML.net was leveraging TensorFlow.net, which is a project from the Cypher team who we had on a uh, previous stream as well. Um, but it was using version 1.x of TensorFlow. Uh, with uh, this new update, you can use version 2.x, right, of TensorFlow. Um, and Jake, would you would you like to speak a little bit more about uh, this particular change and, and what that means for, for ML.net and perhaps even for the tooling? Yeah, sure. I can talk about it a little bit. Uh, the The big reason why we wanted to move to TensorFlow, uh, the latest version, is that there were some issues with installing CUDA, specifically in like the drivers. So uh, there was just it was kind of difficult to actually get the the GPU training up and running um, without having any sort of like driver issues on your machines. Um, unfortunately, the the CUDA version that was for the old TensorFlow was no longer being supported. The latest version of TensorFlow, so you get all the latest features from TensorFlow, but also um, making it so that it's just you know easier to to use it from from Model Builder. Hopefully, we're we're still working on you know integrating it into our tooling, but hopefully in the next release we'll be able to give you an easier set of instructions for getting started with GPU training. It will still be limited to NVIDIA GPUs, but we're actually also exploring. Um, adding support for AMD GPUs and stuff using direct ML. Uh, so more stuff coming in this. Awesome. Yeah, I know that there's been a lot of work uh, being done there uh, with direct ML and uh, being able to accelerate right um, these these training jobs. And you know, you, you folks on the tooling side released um, the local GPU training scenario, right? So I, I can only uh, assume that uh, that particular scenario as a result of this will, will improve, right? Or will get better and yeah, cool. Awesome. So still related to open source. Um, if you folks hadn't read this news uh, or, or seen these news, the .NET Foundation is uh, opening is joining the open source initiatives affiliate program. Uh, that's really awesome. Again, uh, sort of .NET uh, core and, and, and a lot of components of .NET, right? They're open source, including ML.NET. Um, so what this means is now, um, you know, it's just um, dot net uh, and the dot foundation are sort of aligning more with with these uh, sort of initiatives that are happening in the open source ecosystem so it's really great to see you know it joins uh, the likes of uh, the linux foundation and other open source uh, sort of foundations and projects that are out there so this is this is really great to see um still related to the dot net foundation this is something that's sort of soft launched um so if you're looking for speakers uh, let's say that you want to let me zoom in here a little bit, make it a bit easier to see. Um, there's this directory that you can basically find speakers if you're looking for particular topics, right? You can do a, a filter here um, for specific uh, for specific topics that you would like to, to learn about. And if you are a speaker, uh, .NET speaker, right? Um, or or a speak on topics related to .NET and, and any of these things here, um, you can also add yourself to this list. Um, so again, it's it's a soft launch, and and the team is kind of like reviewing these uh, sort of um, you know uh, they're taking some time. They're still trying to work out the process, um, but just it's nice that that this is there, and you know for folks who you know with virtual meetups and and uh, sort of um, mediums like this, right, like these streams, uh, it's really nice that it's it provides a consolidated way consolidated way to find folks who who are passionate about speaking on these topics. Events, there is .NET Conf, the agenda is out, um, and there's tons of really great content that's happening the November 12th through 10th through the 12th. And there's tons of really good stuff, but really, we know why we're here, right? Uh, so there's uh, two talks, I believe, um, on ML.NET. One, Bree is gonna be uh, delivering that talk, and the other one, I believe, is by Veronica, right, which is gonna talk, uh, she's gonna talk about ML.NET, Azure, and Xamarin. Um, in terms of for for 
Bree's talk, uh, I think one of the, the things that would be really nice kind of like extending sort of this format that we have here, which is really about showcasing what's happening in the machine learning space, specifically within ML.NET. If you are a .NET developer uh, or a developer who is using ML.NET in production, uh, we'd love to hear from you. So, you know, Twitter, uh, email, I guess, uh, as well, feel free to reach out uh, to, to Bree or, or any of us here, and we'd love to uh, sort of try to showcase you in this in this talk. Uh, Bree, do you have anything that you would like to uh, maybe add on to, to this? Um, yeah, no, I just decided to do something a little bit different uh, this time around. Uh, you know, I, I've done a ton of intro workshops or intro talks, which are great. Um, but this time I wanted to showcase, you know, how people are using ML.NET in production. Um, or if you're, you know, not yet in production, but have a proof of concept or are about to go in production and want to share that with the world um, from experience. So just let me know. We can get you into my talk. I'm on day one of .NET Conf. Um, and I was also just laughing because someone asked if in the comments, do you use a potato as a mic? So I don't know if that's directed at you or me. I had some audio problems, so maybe me. But uh not that I'm aware of. <laughs> um, now I kind of want to make a potato mic uh, for the next time. But yeah, uh, that's that's all about the, uh, the my talk for .NET Conf. If anyone's interested, um, feel free to reach out on Twitter um, or, you know, get all, all the regular channels. And um, yeah, we could get you in on the talk. Yeah, awesome. Um, yeah, so make sure to reach out uh, if you like to sort of, you know, talk about your experience and, and what you're doing with ML.NET in, in production. Um, continuing with events, directly following, um, yeah, directly following, so the 10th to the 12th, that Friday, we have the virtual ML.NET hackathon, which is, uh, we are going to be um, basically having this event. It's going to be a week-long event, so it starts on the 13th with the workshop. And the workshop is mainly going to be as uh, basically an introduction. So for folks who may not be familiar with ML.NET, um, it, it's, it's going to serve as an introduction and a primer so that you can then get an idea of, hey, here's the types of things that I might be able to do with, uh, with ML.NET. And then you can sort of you know, run with it and, and, and um, essentially create, create a project right, and, and compete in this. Um, so the 13th, it starts with the workshop. Um, you, it's not mandatory, right? So if you are experienced with ML.NET, um, you're more than welcome to join, but you can also just start hacking on it, right? Um, and it's going to be the 13th through the 18th. Your final submissions are due on the 18th. And then on the 20th, we'll be announcing the winners of, of this project um, or of this hackathon. Um, let's see here. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to go ahead and sign up, right? So so you want to sign up and then make sure that, that you get your name and your information on there. Um, First 50 people, a shirt, right? So get a shirt, sign up. Um, and on top of that, once, you, once you've once gone ahead and signed up, you can go ahead and create a project, right? And that's it's really pretty easy. You essentially create a project by opening an issue here in the repository, which I can log into um, because I am not logged into GitHub. But essentially, you'll be able to uh, open up a, a um, or create a project and basically have a detailed uh, description of it. I can kind of show you some of the projects that have already been submitted, um, right? So you provide your idea and you provide some information about it. Um, here we have um, we have Brett's here. Let's say it for example, right? And here is just a, a, a in terms of name. Perhaps you might include uh, you. You can work on this in both. In, as an individual, right? So if you want to work on this by yourself, you're certainly more than welcome to, but we highly encourage you to form teams around this, right? And sort of continue building that community and get to work with new folks. Um, and, and yeah, so you provide a brief description. You also provide information about whether you're looking for teammates. Um, and also if you would like to mentor for your team, and essentially what that, mean, what that means is um, if, if you want a little bit of guidance in terms of like, hey, is this something that's feasible? What do you think? Like that, obviously we wouldn't, uh, you know, the mentors wouldn't necessarily uh, go ahead and, and, and directly be involved in the project, but at least they can provide, and those folks who have experience with ML.NET uh, may be able to provide some guidance around certain questions that you might have. So uh, that, that's certainly an option um, as well. Yeah. So let's see here. Yeah. So, so we have four. Um, and yeah, just make sure to sign up and go ahead and, uh, and create your project. We're really looking forward to it. And then last but not least, this is sometime in the future, but uh, this is the Applied F-Sharp Challenge, which I believe the first one was last year. 
Um, and essentially what this is, it's, it's almost like a hackathon. It's a somewhat longer event that takes place. And uh, you get to basically submit projects or create projects around different areas, one of which includes F sharp, sorry, which one of which includes machine learning and data science. But of course, there's these other topics. But if you're interested in, in participating, uh, I believe that there's going to be more information on this uh, sometime in the future. Uh, at the moment, they're looking for judges, right, in each of these categories. So if you would like to be a judge in one of these categories, uh, make sure to reach out. I think the information is on here on how you can get involved as a judge. Uh, and again, in terms of being a participant, uh, I, I believe that there's going to be more information as uh, you know as time goes on and, and the judges are, are all sort of selected for this. Um, let's see here. And then finally, if you are not already on Discord uh, and you would like to continue the conversation, perhaps you, your questions weren't answered on this on the stream, uh, make sure to join the .NET Evolution. There is a machine learning channel where you can discuss all things machine learning uh, and, again, ask any questions that you may have either, you know, maybe we missed uh, during, during the stream or unrelated to the stream. You can just go ahead and, and engage with the community on there. So with that, let's go on to Franz. Franz, what do you got for us? I think you're on mute, Franz. You are right. Um, yeah, so some time ago, I created an extension for Visual Studio Code. Um, I have a small presentation here that I can, so I can show it. So uh, if you can jump to the slide, oh, perfect. OK. Um, well, I think introductions, we've already done them. So once again, I'm, uh, I'm a full-time CTO at TerraVision. Um, I work with uh, closed and open source uh, technologies, and I'm a full stack developer also. Uh, I used to be a .NET developer years ago, um, but lately, um, slowly I've been transitioning to JavaScript-based projects and Node.js, but I've never lost my love for you know, Microsoft technologies, and, and now that it's all open source, even, even more. Um, so to explain a bit what the extension actually does in Visual Studio, um, it's, a, it's an easy way to run the MLNet CLI commands from Visual Studio Code. Uh, right now, um, the, the only way, at least in Linux or Mac, uh, to run, uh, to have like a visual way to do this is uh, by using the CLI only. So the, the whole idea behind this was to make it more... Um, um, intuitive or easier to, to run from uh, Visual Studio Code. Uh, it has a, a wizard style view, so it just asks you for a, um, a series of steps uh, of what you need, the parameters you need to run the commands. And of course, it, uh, the idea is to offer a, um, a faster iteration to, to actually using the CLI. Um, and well, uh, one of the reasons, and I already mentioned one, was to increase developer productivity, um, and also to have like an alternative to the visual builder, the model builder in, in Visual Studio 2019, which is awesome, um, that uh, extension, but uh, in Linux or Mac, or even people that just used uh, lightweight, lightweight uh, code editors, it's... Um, uh, they have a, a an alternative to be able to do it themselves. Um, and of course, I've always wanted to contribute something to open source uh, because um, I just love uh, how open source works in general and contribution. So uh, the whole idea behind this was, well, let me let me contribute something and I, I can actually you know do and help with. Um, so let me just show a quick demo of uh, how um, Visual Studio Code extension works. Um, let me know if this is uh, okay, if it doesn't look small. Um, can you zoom in a little bit? Zoom in, okay. How do you zoom in on Windows? I've never <laughs> known how to do that. Um, I, think if, um, I think it's Control Plus. Control Plus. Oh, there we go. Awesome. Perfect. Okay. So um, 
so mainly the only things you need to be able to use the actual extension are to have um, the SDK installed. Uh, it can be .NET Core um, 3.1 and up. And uh, uh, .NET 5, it's working on .NET 5. I tried that this morning um, uh, on the RC2 version. Uh, and you know, also need the MLNet uh, CLI, which you can install using uh, the, uh, the global tool uh, for .NET. Just installing with this command, you can get the MLNet uh, CLI installed. Uh, after that, uh, all we would need is just to look for the extension. You can look for ML.NET, it's probably the only extension you'll find. And we just install it. Um, so what, what we're going to do here is a, a quick test. Um, so running from the command palette for the ones that use Visual Studio Code, um, you can press Control Shift P to open the command palette, and then you you can find this uh, ML.NET model builder in in the commands. And the first thing it's going to ask you for is what type of um, um, what type of auto train you want to use. That's uh, from the CLI. Um, in this case, I've only got two. Uh, in, a, in a minute, I'll, I'll show the, the, the ones that I'm planning on adding in the future. But for now, we've got uh, classification and regression. So if you pick uh, classification, for example, it's going to ask for um, a comma-separated uh, value file or uh, tab-separated. Uh, so what we're going to be using is the uh, detox, I mean, the um, toxic comments um, Wikipedia uh, data which is actually on the um, Microsoft Docs um, tutorial. Um, oh, sorry, I clicked out of it. Okay, so the first thing it asks for if it has a header row, which is one of the things that it asked, uh, it asked for on the CLI. Um, in this case, this uh, file does have it. Um, and here it will ask which uh, label column you want to use. Um, in this case, it's the actual first column, which is sentiment. Um, the next step, it will ask you if you want to ignore any columns, like if you don't want to use every single column in your data set, you could just use uh, the ones, uh, you could just click out the ones you don't need. And after that, it will ask for the training time. Uh, in this case, we're just going to put 10 for demo pr uh, purposes. And the last, set, the last step is just going to say, where do you want to output the actual code, the, uh, the train model? In this case, I'm going to put it in this folder, output. And we could just let it run. Let me just minimize this here. I think it, there we go. So just like in the CLI, it'll, what it will do, it will do, it'll run the CLI on, the, on, the, on a child process and then send back whatever um, information the CLI is already uh, using. Um, in this case, it's already generated the code. Um, and yeah, so that made it a lot easier than, you know, having to, because if we put an example here, uh, we can, you have the CLI, and then depending on the, each one of the commands you want to run, then um, let me just put an example of classification. Uh, then you get all the different things you need to add, like the, the data set, the, the label column, the path, and everything. So this makes it a little easier to just search for the file, import it, and then show it. Um, uh, so that was the actual reason why I did it. And creating the extension was pretty easy um, in, in general. So um, that, that's the, the actual reason why, why I did it. Uh, so let's go, well, here well, we can see the, uh, the actual output of this. So it's your classic uh, output from, from the command. It'll generate the actual solution. And you'll have your uh, different methods and classes to be able to consume that, those models afterwards. Okay. 
So what are the things? Um, so right now you can do binary classification and regression using the actual um, uh, extension in Visual Studio Code. Uh, the future things that I'm planning on adding and uh, is to actually have a bit more feature parity with the actual CLI. So like any of the commands you can do on the CLI, you can do them from the actual extension. So that's adding image classification and recommendation to the to the um, to the extension, a more intuitive UI. Uh, this is something I was uh, planning. I was discussing with Jake also, like uh, implementing a step wizard where you can go f uh, back and forward on the steps. Because right now it's just like one flow, and and you really don't know how many steps you've got left to be able to um, to to finish the command. Uh, and the other one is probably implementing web views where we could actually create a a, a, a nice UI. Similar to the one that's in the Visual Studio uh, 2019 um, model builder. Uh, that, that's uh, probably going to take more time to do something like this, but uh, it, it's just uh, finding a way to have feature parity with the rest of um, with the rest of the. Uh, I mean, with the other ID. Uh, the other thing I'm working on is a config file, so that all those steps that you're running right now, you could just have them already like predefined in a config file. Uh, and also, um, uh, you could just actually say model builder run, and then it will take whatever files you have in your configuration file and run it for you and it exports it and do everything for you. So it's not, um, you don't have to go through all these steps every time you need to generate a, a, a train model. And one well, comment. Go ahead. Franz. Go ahead. We we're actually doing a similar thing on the on the model builder side, so we can we can sync and make sure yeah. our config files are are compatible with each other. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, that would that would be great. More importantly, though, will it be YAML? You know, <laughs> folks have strong opinions on that. I think it'll probably be JSON, but we'll. we'll see. <laughs> Yeah, well, we can, yeah, we, we can discuss what, whatever it's going to be, but um, yeah, I mean, whichever it is, uh, we could, we could probably add it to the, to the, uh, so the extension can read from it as well. Cool. Um, and last but not least, and this is more something that Jake uh, mentioned in, in a call we had, uh, is to integrate this with .NET Interactive, so that once you generate your, um, your train models, you can play around with it just using .NET Interactive without having to have like a, a project and then, you know, uh, creating, um, you know, all the methods to consume it and everything, something that can be just nice, quick and easy to play around with the, with the actual train model, um, which would, uh, this is going to be very interesting. Uh, we still have to investigate how to do it, but uh, it's, um, it's coming. It's coming for the future. Um, so ways you can contribute to the project. Um, I still don't have like guidelines and things like that in the repo. I'm, I'm planning on, you know, uh, creating guidelines and things like that in, in the actual GitHub repository. But mainly that the ways that you can actually contribute is test it. I mean, uh, please use it in your daily projects, uh, report any issues you have. Um, I mean, right now it reads from a CSV file, uh, a tab separated tab separated file, but uh, I don't know. Maybe I do have a mistake somewhere, and it's you know some large data set is not uh, won't read it correctly. Um, so please please try it out. Uh, and of course, you can in the same GitHub repo you can uh, request any new features you'd like to see. Like you can say, oh, you can do this better this way, or um, maybe I'd like to see some specific feature. Um, added well, we can we can in general we can say if the CLI does it, then probably we can add it to the the extension, and if not, then we can even uh, escalate it even more and probably open up an issue on the uh, machine learning repo and see if we can add it, have it added to the actual CLI also. And pull request a welcome. So if you see any um, thing that you can help on on the actual source code. Um, you can. You're more than welcome to create a pull request uh, right now. Uh, I'll see if between for this week I can create so, a set of guidelines uh, for those pull requests so that we can all be in sync. But 
yes, the more than welcome uh, pull requests. Um, for the rest, uh, well, these two URLs we can add them to the community links. I guess the the actual uh, you know repo and the uh, and the extension. And well, yeah, uh, that's my presentation for today. So, if it, can I put you on the spot here just a ahead. little bit? Would you be Would you be up showing the uh, the extension again and just running it with a little bit more time? Yep. Um, we had we had a question in the chat, yep. so I just want to chat about it a little bit. Um, as far as so, yeah, whether or not you have to implement the algorithms yourself, and the answer is no. So this is running using the the CLI, and the CLI is based on our our AutoML solution that we also use in Model Builder. And what we do is we there's there's several algorithms within the um, within classification, uh, and we we iterate over them. So using our AutoML, we we do what we call sweeping. So we sweep over the algorithms to figure out you know which one is going to be a good candidate, and then from there we fine tune it using hyperparameter sweeping. So there's no need for you to kind of pick your algorithm yourself. Uh, there's you know we'll pick the algorithm and kind of tune it. That being said, after you after you kind of go through this process, uh, the code that's generated has the the pipeline in it with the algorithm and the parameters that we that we trained against. So if you if you are knowledgeable enough to you know go and and you know fine tune the algorithm yourself, or you want to choose a specific algorithm because you know it'll be a good fit for for your data, um, you can you can you know start with start with this extension in, in VS Code or start with the extension in Model Builder to kind of get a, a working pipeline and then from there sort of fine tune your um, your algorithm. Yeah, and I know I did a I, I did a 10 second example. I know that if I, if I would have put a bit more time to it, um, it would have uh, cycled through different algorithms. Let me just give a quick test here. Um, Okay, let's put it 30, I think 30 seconds, it will cycle through more. Just delete this one. Now, did I make a mistake? You might have had one more thing in the wizard, I didn't. Yeah, good. Oh, yeah, the out, yeah, I think I know what happened. Um, Row, yes. Sentiment, okay. Train time, thirty. Let's put twenty. I know I tried. I tested twenty this morning. It was, it went through. Output. There we go. Yeah, because that before I just used one, and I know that when you give it more time, it does go cycle through more. Um, more algorithms. Cool. So yeah, you can see here it's already gone through three different algorithms. And if you gave it more time, you would see that maybe these three algorithms pop up more with different mm -hmm. sort of parameters and fine tuning things, or or potentially more algorithms. I'm trying to remember how many there are for <laughs> classification and AutoML. But uh, oh, and one one thing to note too, um, I think you you said in your uh, presentation that it was. Binary classification, but I think this, if it if it's using the CLI, it's actually multi-class classification. So oh, you can, okay. mm -hmm. um, it'll it'll train for you know several labels, not just not just two labels. Awesome. Cool. And it looks like we have another question. Uh, Albert asked, "How can I clone this project?" How can I clone this project? Um, if it's to contribute to the actual source code, um, let me just open a, a, a window here. Let's just go to here to GitHub. Uh, I should look for Franz Silva. That would be under users. Did I, did I see that you already had some activity in the, uh, in the hackathon? Are you planning on joining? Um, is that with me? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I probably will. Yes. Nice. 
Um, so yeah, here's the actual uh, GitHub repository. You can you can clone it from here if you want, uh, and then uh, submit a pull request uh, with whatever with whatever changes you need. If it's to actually install the um, the extension, it's freely you know you can just search for the extension on the on the um, extension store on Visual Studio Code. Yeah, and we provided the links uh, in the community yep. uh, links, uh, and we also pasted them in the chat. So if you're interested, you can check those out. Cool. Thanks so much, friends. Cool. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. So, so you, so is this your first uh, extension, or had you built uh, something similar in the in the past? Yeah. Or I've, I guess other extensions. Yeah, I've built extensions, but they're not public. They're more uh, personal and uh, for the actual uh, inside of the company. Um, they're more like uh, autocomplete for projects. Um, uh, for example, we have internal projects where we have a lot of code we need to rewrite every single time. So we have like code snippets and things like that for specific projects. So we actually create our own uh, extensions sometimes to, to improve uh, developer productivity. But this is my first public extension. Awesome. So, so what um, you know what because uh, because you know you mentioned that you were a .NET developer, you're still so so or I, I guess maybe I'm jumping the question or, or leading there. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you a .NET developer or were you yes. a .NET developer at some point? I, okay. I, I was. I was a .NET developer. I do not uh, actually do .NET development nowadays, mm -hmm. uh, mainly because um, uh, most of the projects that we work on are. Uh, you know, Node.js, Python, uh, Golang, and, and any uh, other languages. Um, but uh, it's more like uh, we're, we're looking for the opportunity to work with uh, also a .NET uh, open source. Um, and I think it's something like uh, we're just looking like for the right moment to implement something using .NET, it, at least in, in the company. Uh, by myself, it's I've always, I have never stopped learning .NET. Um, I've always uh, uh, kept up to date with uh, whatever new technologies they're, they're launching. Um, you know, it's like every single .NET conf, I'm always like number one guy to listen to Scott Hanselman, you know, show whatever demo he has uh, for .NET and things like that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's kind of me in, in that sense. Um, and of course, I I, um, I did I do sometimes uh, workshops. I did a workshop recently. I'm, I'm actually even here in Ecuador. I did a workshop recently on Razor Pages as well, and those kind of things I like to I like to do because um, I, I like to keep up to date with whatever Microsoft is doing. Very cool. Yeah. Those, How did you? Uh, the, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I was going to ask if Malibu had a question. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask. <laughs> Malibu. Like to say. <laughs> uh, how did you? How did you kind of hear about, <laughs> about ML.NET? Like, what got you started with with this project in particular? Well, it was mostly because um, I'm always looking like for ways to solve different problems. Uh, it can be for client projects or it can be personal projects. Um, one thing was like, you know, doing image classification was one was kind of the things I was looking into in that moment. I was actually using TensorFlow and, and Python. But I noticed afterwards that, you know, there was a version for .NET. It was a lot easier to use. It was just very straightforward. So I said, why not, you know, uh, start testing with this uh, um, ML.NET? And I thought, well, that's great. And Again, I use the model builder inside Visual Studio 2019, which makes it so easy to to do all the all the work. Um, uh, and that's kind of uh, it's more testing than you know like actual production use, but it's it's got so much potential. You know, just to be able to use .NET for everything. I mean, it's it just makes it a lot easier. And that's kind of how I found ML.NET. I, I started with you know learning with TensorFlow and then. I noticed that Microsoft was investing a lot in you know machine learning as well, and that uh, ML.NET existed. So that's when I started to test it. Cool. Nice. 
so so taking a, a, a bit of a step back there um mm -hmm. what was your experience because you, you mentioned that you started with tensorflow and you were using python so um you know what was your experience uh with machine learning prior to i guess you know st starting to use these tools and uh, what sort of projects were you were you building? You mentioned image classification, but um, it, I mean, if it's okay and to, to to speak more about it, like what what sort of problems were you trying to solve? Yeah, it was mostly um, uh, it was a the problem that we were looking to solve was to find um, if someone uh, not to give up too much about the project, but it was to give it was uh, mainly because we needed to know if people were using the uh, correct equipment on a on a let's say a construction site. Um, so we were looking for ways to say, okay, so is this is this um, labor using a hat? Is he using his uh, safety jacket? Is he using these kind of things? And that's when we had started to like investigate how is this done. And that's kind of the the, the reason why I went into image classification is to you know like to we started with a whole bunch of pictures like saying this is with a hat on, hat off, hat on, hat off, and then started to uh, train all these models um, to be able to identify those those things. So that's that's the reason why I got into the image classification. And at the same time, you know, there's, you know, there's always one thing I say, like there's always a way that in .NET you can do it better. And it's not just like saying I love .NET and everything .NET. It's just, it's just true, you know, in, in the sense that it's, um, you know, you want to do image classification using TensorFlow, or whatever other technologies. Okay, you can do it. You can build your entire like Python file, and you can you know find the uh, the correct commands to install. And then if you're using a GPU, you can go through all the uh, installing the specific drivers and the CUDA drivers and everything you need to be able to run them on your own machine if you have a, a GPU for it. Um, but then. Afterwards, you know, you find solutions like ml.net, which is, oh, just uh, you've got the CLI with three lines of code or just one line of code. You can just run your models if you want. And the model builder is just click, 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 click. It, you know, it makes it a lot easier for you. I mean, it, it, um, I know that one thing Microsoft does right is to make develop productivity a lot easier. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So it looks like uh, we actually have a question here asking, um, so is, is there anything like live visualizations like, like TensorBoard for VS, VS Code, and then they said actually for, like generally for ML.NET. Um, so we don't currently have anything like that in our tooling, but that's actually something that we're working on and something we wanna add, especially with integrating with the notebooks experience, not necessarily for live training, but just more model explainability in general and, uh, and more visualizations so you can, you know, track your model or see, you know, accuracy and all the different metrics that you have and be able to see explainability. Uh, we currently have um, two methods of explainability, PFI or permutation feature importance and uh, feature contribution calculations. <laughs> um, and so those are part of the API right now. We're still working on making those a bit more user friendly um, and then eventually integrating them into our tooling as well. Um, but yeah, uh, anything to add there from Jake or Lu uh, Luis? Yeah, I mean, if you have ideas uh, and things you'd like to see, uh, certainly make your way to the repositories on GitHub and uh, you know uh, open an issue and then let us know what, what, what type of things would you like to see? Just, just to kind of add to what Luis said, I, I'm actually not familiar with TensorBoard, so I'll have to go try it out and see what kind of visualizations they sort of um, offer and yeah, thanks for the the recommendation. Yeah, and I, and I think you know, kind of following on that point. So with TensorFlow, one of the things that you're able to see, it's kind of like, um, so so in the in, this is a perfect example, right? With where the output from uh, AutoML is like, here's the model that was trained, and here is the accuracy or whatever metric that you're optimizing for. Um, so so those are those types of things. You know, it's it's something that you know should should be you know somewhat doable. But again, you know, it's it's a matter of um, you know, trying to figure out what, what's best, right? And what makes sense in the, in the tooling. Um, we have some other questions in the chat. Let's see. Uh, someone asked, what happened to Microsoft Virtual Academy? It used to be a good video collection and resource for learning. I don't know the answer to what happened to it. I do have some alternatives. Louise, maybe you know, because you work on 
documentation? Yeah, that's 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 a really good question. I don't know what happened to National Virtual Academy, <laughs> but uh, you can certainly check out. There's tons of stuff on. Um, there's tons of stuff on uh, Channel Nine, right? So there's tons of shows there. Um, and John Wood. <laughs> well, yeah, I always recommend <laughs> John Wood. Uh, he has great videos. I'll post it in the chat. The the link uh, he was on, I think, two weeks ago. Um, he has a ton, a whole playlist for ML Donut. He has almost sixty videos um, from beginner, you know, getting started to. Uh, um, to more advanced topics. And yeah. I think, I don't know if you mentioned this earlier, Louise, but as part of the hackathon, um, the first day we're actually going to have our intro workshop. Uh, did, I don't know if you mentioned that earlier, um, but we'll have our intro to ML.net workshop as well, uh, which is something we've recorded in the past and have videos for. But um, for, you know, good video collections, I'd recommend, you know, the Channel 9 stuff we have and then uh, John Wood. Yeah. Actually and Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to ask a question about the the hackathon stuff. Um, I suppose I could have asked offline, but do do we have like themes or categories or um, like specific, you know? Yeah, I, I can pull it up if um, uh, if you want. I uh, kind of talk a little bit more about that. Um, sharing. Oh no, I think I froze. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. All right, because you guys can still see, see me screen, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's a really good question. And um, going back before I get into this to a point, uh, JDR and TXRU. Uh, Microsoft Virtual Academy is equal to Emerson Learn now. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can find a lot of learning content in Microsoft Learn, right? So that's a really great platform. You can also get certification, I think, through Virtual Academy before you were able to get certifications as well. Um, so yeah, definitely take a look at uh, MS Learn, take a look at Channel 9, of course, take a look at Docs, uh, take a look at the community uh, contributions like and, and videos like John Wood, and there's a few courses out there. Um, so yeah, there's there's tons of stuff that you can check out for that. Um, but yeah. Um, okay, so themes, getting into the hackathon. And, and so there's a few resources here that can might maybe help you get started, right? So one of the things that I mentioned, I, I talked about creating a new project, right? But what happens if you see, for example, um, you look through these projects and the issues, right? And you're like, you know, I don't really, either I don't want to come up with a new idea or I, there's this idea that I think would be really cool to implement. Um, you can go to one of the, uh, oh, nice, we got a new one. Uh, so for example, right, let's, let's take a look at um, this one here, right, by Daniel. Um, right now, I believe it's only, him and he's still not sure whether he's looking for teammates. Um, but if it's something that you'd like to contribute uh, to or, or you'd like to work on, you can just add a message here, right, in, in, in the issue. And you can just, hey, you know, I'm, I'm interested in contributing. And, and then you can you know, just sort of update this issue to reflect uh, who, who your team is and, and who, who forms part of that team, right? So that's sort of, you know, creating a project or, um, you know, uh, or, or joining an existing one. Uh, let's see what the new one is. Uh, okay. Just blank. <laughs> yeah, so Aminu3001, uh, when you get a chance, um, please go ahead and fill this out if, if, if you want to participate uh, and just provide a little bit more detail. Uh, but it's a good start. Love the enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, Jake, were you asking more like if there's going to be like categories which you know yeah that's what i was kind of wondering i just saw that in the f sharp thing uh that you showed off Luis, they kind of had very like specific categories um i was yeah just wondering if we had... oh, so okay. there, there is and there isn't uh, so this is another resource uh that's also in the repository you can look at it at project ideas and things so we don't have categories like for example like hey you know you here's a price for tooling here's a price for documentation mm -hmm. Like we don't have it broken out like that, right? Because we didn't know how many submissions we would get. So right. as it grows, we definitely plan to do something like that. Um, and we may give like special prizes, like most ambitious or, you know, um, but that's nothing that we've actually like laid out quite yet, category wise. <laughs> yeah, if, if we get enough submissions, yeah, we, we certainly love to, to sort of, you know, uh, break it down like that, but we'll we'll see like reset uh, how many submissions we actually get. Um, but, to, but to give you an idea of the types of projects that you can actually uh, work on, right, or might be interested in working on is, 
Um, one would be contributing directly to the core repository, the, the .NET machine learning repository, right? It's something that you might might do, right? It might be to, for example, uh, we talked about that uh, PFI uh, or, or permutation feature importance and feature contribution calculator, right? Those are two interpretability techniques that are currently available in, inside of ML.NET. Uh, as, as we mentioned, there's still some work being done to make those a little bit more uh, user friendly. Right, and, and there's other interpretability techniques beyond those, right? So perhaps you may be interested in, like, in, in implementing a new interpretability technique or even contributing to the existing ones, um, right? Um, something else you might want to add, uh, basically contribute extensions to .NET Interactive. If you're not familiar with uh, .NET Interactive, it is this, uh, one of the things that it provides you with, it, it allows you to work with Jupyter Notebooks and, and use .NET code inside of Jupyter Notebooks, right? So perhaps you might add an extension such as I know one of you uh, folks on the, on the chat was asking, hey, are, are there visualizations, right, for these training jobs? So that may be something that you might be interested in adding as an extension, right? Uh, something else is contributing to the uh, TensorFlow.net, right? So that's that's not necessarily, uh, that, that's something that, it, again, it's, it's used as part of ML.net, right? We just talked about it, how it was upgraded to 0 0.20, to version 0 0.20. Um, and, and perhaps something that you might be interested in doing there is, TensorFlow has this object detection API, right? Uh, so currently, if you want to do object detection, uh, number one, for, for training, you have to do it in the tooling, right? Um, and number two, currently, because it is a resource intensive sort of workload, uh, it, um, it, it leverages Azure, right? But perhaps there may be a way uh, that you might be able to implement the TensorFlow object detection API uh, in TensorFlow.net, and then that could eventually get consumed by, by ML.net, right? So those are just, some ideas of things that you might want to uh, consider, you know, working on. Uh, there's also documentation, right? You can certainly contribute to documentation um, and, and and things like that. The only requirement, and this is actually important, and let me kind of go to the rules here. Um, the only requirement, like strict requirement, there's actually a few, but one is that it has to be in a project, right? So uh, as, as awesome as uh, you know, the model builder um, extension for VS Code is, uh, unfortunately, you know, it, it's, it's not a new project, it's a existing project, um, but you can work on essentially like, let's say, I don't know, adding visualizations to, to the um, you know, model builder uh, extension or, or ML.NET extension of VS Code, right? So that would count, right? It's so although, although maybe not you know, doing something like that, but, but adding on to this existing project that's out there, that would certainly count as a new project, right? Um, and then the other thing is you must use ML.NET in some way, shape, or form, right? So, so as long as those two things are, are, are sort of satisfied, um, and of course that you agree to, 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 to some of these things here, um, that, that should be enough, right, to get you started. So um, hopefully that kind of gives, um, yeah, ho hopefully that gives a, a bit of a, you know, um, hopefully that gives a little bit of an, uh, an insight into what the type of projects you might want to work on are. Cool, thanks, Luis. Mm -hmm. so I noticed a question in the chat about CUDA GPU. <clears throat> um, I can talk on that a little bit. So I don't actually know what the ROCM is, uh, but I believe we're going to kind of increase our compatibility with GPUs uh, using direct, direct ML. I'm not sure if it'll have support for that. I can kind of figure out offline, um, but that's supposed to anything that with the way that the direct ML is sort of architected, anything that um, DirectX gets sort of like GPU optimization for, I believe that the direct ML should be getting some sort of performance boost from it. They're gonna be working on sort of improvements over time. Um, but again, I'm not sure with that specific uh, processor. Um, if it's but if, it's, if you wanna see it, please you know leave your feedback um, in our repo. Always yep. looking for, for that feedback and seeing what you all need added to the framework and tooling. We got uh, another comment. These comments are really cracking me up. Um, <laughs> Moist Howlett says, uh, useless class waste of time. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you meant this stand up, but if that's what you meant, I'm sorry that we were wasting your time. If there's anything that you wanted to see that we didn't show, let us know. Um, <laughs> that and the potato mic, you know, is really. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> We, we actually have another question here from S Ready, and that's kind of unrelated, uh, talking about uh, authentication and project templates with uh, Entity Framework. So mm -hmm. on this particular stand-up, we cover um, 
you know, we cover machine learning topics, right? So anything, uh, there's some somewhat of a, a bit of a focus on ML.net, but again, we talk, we bring on uh, community uh, members to, to come talk and show off their awesome projects like, like Franz, right? Um, but if you're interested in NTT Framework, um, there is a stand-up for NTT Framework, I believe, uh, which is gonna take, it takes place every other Wednesday, uh, whenever we're not on, right? So you might wanna check that one out. Um, and something that I missed, and I don't think we talked about before, is there was a launch of uh, .NET Live TV, right? Which is where you'd be able to get access to all of these uh, stand-ups and, and different shows related to the .NET ecosystem. So make sure to check that out. <laughs> And then oh. one, one thing to uh, to add, if when you're working on hackathon projects or just contributing in general, we kind of mentioned the Discord before, but feel free to join there if you have questions and you need some, you want me to try to help connect you with experts inside of Microsoft, I can try to, uh, you know, get some knowledge from inside of Microsoft if you need it. Um, one project that I'm kind of excited about, I'm gonna actually maybe add it to your, to your list, Luis, for the, the hackathon, is there's there's things that are sort of ML.net adjacent, one of them being like data frame. Um, so the data frame is useful in, um, again, I'm not actually an expert on data frame, but I'll just talk about it a tiny bit. It's useful in kind of like the notebook experience because it's like an in-memory version of uh, our iData view that ML.net has. And so what that allows you to do is sort of, you know, visualize it and 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 use it more in like in memory ways like you would expect to like show it in graphs and show it in in tables and stuff. Um, but what I was going to say for the hackathon project, the one contribution if somebody else wants to make it or if I, it, maybe I'll go work on it is um, like that currently doesn't support nullable values like sparse data in in it, but even though I data view does. So that's like an area where, you know, we could go improve data frame and that would improve the experience in notebooks as well. Um, and that'd be, I'd be super excited for that contribution. Just throwing that out there. If anyone out there is <laughs> really excited to go work on that, um, but cool. Uh, we have this great question: uh, Is it still worth trying the hackathon even with very little experience? Yes, definitely. Um, like we mentioned earlier, there's a ton of resources to get started and start learning. We're always here for support uh, if you have questions. And then, actually, to kick off the hackathon, we're going to be doing our um, intro to ML uh, workshop. I think it's like a, I don't know if we're gonna do a three hour or six hour version, um, probably somewhere in between. Um, so even if you didn't wanna, or didn't have time to get up and running with ML.net before then, you could still um, sit through the workshop, see if you you know enjoy it and wanna contribute, and then you could sign up for the hackathon after if that's how you wanted to do it. Uh, totally fine. And then let's see. Uh, someone asked if Donut has any role in machine learning. Uh, yes, it does. Uh, if this is your first time tuning in, um, we, you know, are the machine learning with .NET standups. Uh, so ML.NET is the, the main product we work on, uh, which is a machine learning framework for .NET developers. Uh, I'll put up the URL list too. That will have a lot of the resources and um, so you can get started there. There it is. Uh, that's the, I don't think I had put this up before. So these are the community links for today. Um, but we can put it in the chat as well. Uh, any other questions from anyone? Um, actually, while we're waiting for questions to come in, friends, I don't think anyone has asked you this yet, but uh, what ML.NET scenario would you want to see next as part of AutoML and the tooling that are not yet uh, a part of it? Hmm. If you could choose any of the scenarios, I think we, we don't support uh, yet uh, anomaly detection, forecasting, clustering, and that might be the four that we don't, or the three we don't support. I mean, there might be one more. Yeah, I mean, there's there's more scenarios out there, like natural language. Yeah, exactly. So out of all, any of those, actually, which which would you want to see next uh, supported by AutoML? Uh, forecasting. Would be a really interesting. Uh, that, that's very useful. You can't imagine how many projects use forecasting. So, yeah, that, that would be my number one. Yeah, no, yeah. would love to hear from everyone else as well what they want to see next uh, as part of AutoML or ML.NET. Um, always looking for that feedback, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but I do see that we're getting to the top of the hour. So uh, yeah, we see a, a boat there in the chat for anomalies, anomaly detection. Great so that's that's really great to see. 
Um, but yeah, we're getting to the top of the hour. We just want to thank Franz. Franz, I uh, believe we shared uh, the Twitter. Uh, other than that, is there uh, something else or a better way to get in contact with you? Where's Twitter? Twitter just fine. Twitter's just fine. Twitter's all right. Fine. Awesome. Uh, all right. So, um, you know, uh, sign up for the hackathon. Uh, you know, like, subscribe, all the things. Uh, first 50 people to sign up for the hackathon get, uh, get a free t shirt. Um, and next time, next time, uh, it's going to be really exciting. Uh, we have Don Syme joining us, and he's going to be talking about automatic differentiation. Uh, so make sure to tune in for that on November 4th. And thanks again, Fran, so much for, for joining us and for contributing to the ML.net tool set. We're, we're super excited to have you as part of our, our bigger community team. Thanks so much. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Thank you. All right. Thanks, folks. Uh, catch you later. Take care. Bye. Bye.